Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal. I am back with another video. And today I'm going to give you guys my first impressions on the War for Cybertron trilogy second chapter, Earthrise. I'm going to make this as spoiler free as I possibly can because I understand that some people have not yet seen it. It just got put on Netflix and I got the opportunity to watch it. So I wanted to give you guys what I thought about it. Of course, I got a lot to talk about. So sit back, relax, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and let's transform and roll out. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon, becoming a channel member or purchasing some merch on my Teespring store today. Okay, so what is Earthrise? Earthrise is the second chapter in the War for Cybertron trilogy. It is a sequel to the first part, which was Siege, and it's going to be followed up by with Kingdom. That being said, it is a second set of six episodes. It's currently on Netflix. And the way that you actually have to watch this is a little bit different than usually how they do chapters on Netflix. You actually have to search Earthrise. You'll find like that it's a whole like subset of episodes done that way. And I think it was done on purpose because the way that this is presented, at least Siege was done this way. And I would say even the same with Earthrise is I, it's like the second movie um, in a trilogy of movies because it's pretty much like if that's kind of how like the whole story is told. And with that said, was Earthrise any good? I believe that it was an improvement over Siege. There were a lot of things in Siege that I was like, uh, you, could, you could do this a little bit better. Uh, it, it, you could tell the storyline uh, a certain way. And a lot of that backstory that I was wondering about in Siege is revealed in uh, Earthrise. You know, some of the, the backstory that you wanted to know about that they were giving little like droplets of, they told a lot more in Earthrise. I'm not spoiling anything by telling you that because you're going to want to see it and find out exactly how some of these characters are. They do a, a lot to make callbacks to previous Transformer series. Like they talk about certain planets and certain sectors and certain things uh, and the way that it was done is it was was pretty cool like how like the whole map like had all of the different like s s things that if you're actually familiar with the toy line and you look at the the toy line itself the back of the packaging like when you pull the robot out there's a map and that if you actually set the whole map in place apparently it all lines up and i haven't actually tried to do that myself to actually see the way that the map is but that is apparently in accordance to the toy line that being said though the toy line itself is, I, I gotta say, it feels a little underrepresented, at least as far as the Earthrise toy line is concerned. They got a lot of the bigger players, you know, but not everyone that you're expecting. And that was kind of the same thing in, uh, in Siege, right? So you didn't have like all of the characters in the toy line show up because you only have so many models that you can do. And then as far as the story is concerned, the story takes place after the events of Siege. Now, I cannot give you guys, uh, you know, like what, how this whole story like breaks out unless you've seen Siege. So I'm going to spoil a little bit of it. And what we already know is that the AllSpark itself was tossed into space. And where did it go? Well, that's really kind of like the entire uh, purpose of this entire chapter. The planet is now dying, which we kind of saw at the end of Siege and the motivations of the characters as to why they're doing what they're doing is based upon this whole fact that they're searching for the AllSpark. Now, there are some things in the trailer that you have, if you, if you actually did watch the trailer, that were, were revealed as far as characters that are going, that did show up in Earthrise. Uh, some of the new characters, like the mercenary faction, that was pretty cool. Uh, the mercenaries themselves, I actually found them to be a very cool like addition to the show. If anything, it, you kind of now want like your own like special team that did show up there, and the characters that are a part of it. It's kind of neat how they where how everything like lines up there. The other thing is Elita One. From what I have been under have been told is that Elita One herself. What her, her storyline was supposed to end at the end of Siege. You were not supposed to find out, you know, what happened to her. And they decided to expand upon her story quite a bit here in Earthrise. And not spoiling anything, but her and her resistance unit that you saw at the end of Siege, you know, get to have their whole adventure while 
the events that are happening with the Ark and the Autobots and that they're searching for the AllSpark and how it all lines up is pretty cool. And again, I'm trying my best not to spoil anything because the new characters that are introduced that were revealed, it's kind of like a little bit of a spoiler because they're in the toy line as well. But the story itself and how it brings everything together to, to, to get to Kingdom was done really well. However, there are some problems that I had with the show. Pacing is the number one problem I think that I had. Uh, especially the first couple of episodes, you kind of feel that same drag that Siege had that you're like, okay, let's let's move on. Let's let's get to the next story element. Come on, let's let's get to the next part of the episode. There's a lot of interesting story elements that you get to see. You get to see the descent of Megatron. You get to see Optimus Prime is kind of going through a journey in and of himself. But I don't like this Optimus Prime. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't like him. He's not the aspirational hero. And I understand where they're going. They're trying to get him to the place where he becomes the aspirational hero. But this to me felt like it was something was missing out of him that Earthrise is trying to get him there. Um, his, his whole motivations and quest and why he does what he does, you end up learning some of that backstory in Earthrise. And I think it was set up really well, but I still don't like the delivery and I don't like the um, his character in and of himself. However, the action sequences in this show are done a lot better than they were in Siege. Some of the, the action sequences were really awesome to see. I, I, I don't want to spoil anything because there's a whole moment where a specific character shows up and it's 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 a big battle and it's just like this is really really awesome and then something that i wanted to see was teased and you're going to know exactly what i'm talking about when this when they're fighting this one character and another character shows up and you're like yes 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 and then they snatch it and then they snatch it and you'll know exactly what i'm talking about when you're gonna be like and I wish they would have gone a little further. I wish they, that, that, that they did something more with that. And there's another character that shows up that is getting us to the place where we need to be with Optimus Prime and getting us to the place that we need to be with the heroes. And when that character shows up, it's awesome. It's, it's straight awesome how the character shows up the, in the first place and how the character... Uh, is trying to lead Optimus Prime along, but I wish there was more. I wish there was more. And this is something that I had the issue with with a lot of the, the characters that they were trying to introduce is because they had a limited budget. Earthrise, to me, felt a lot like Siege Chapter 2. Not Earthrise. It felt like Siege Chapter 2. So that being said... The second chapter is, is usually better than the first, which it is. The action sequences are a lot better than the first. There's also another character. When th this character shows up on screen, I had to take a double take and go, am I watching G1 or am I watching a new universe? Because <laughs> the way it was done was like literally like generation one brought to life in computer animation. And that particular character shows up was it was a was an awesome reveal. And I was like, that was really cool um, because I, again, I don't want to spoil anything. But, you know, at the end of it, the final episode was well worth it. I'm not going to spoil her. I, I, I keep saying it because I have to remind myself because I want to say names. I want to drop I want to drop like story hints and elements. But the dialogue itself is where I, the dialogue and the pacing in the first couple of episodes really is 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 terrible there are moments where i'm like yes this is a lot better than siege this is better than siege and then you're like okay you take two steps forward and then you take three steps back and that's literally how i felt with the dialogue if you're not familiar with generation one and beast wars uh you'll know that first of all beast wars was was extremely well written and Generation 1 was written by a lot of different writers throughout Hollywood. They were, like, hired to write it. But then Ron Freeman would come in and go, okay, you're writing this character to go this way. That's that's fine. But that's not how the character would, would talk. So what they would do, like, Ron Freeman would go in and rewrite the dialogue in places. 
I think that this show needed that. It needed a rewrite of the dialogue in order to make the characters feel like they are the actual voices of those characters. It's something that Ron Friedman had a good grasp on. And the dialogue in some of these characters, especially the Autobots, the Decepticons, I feel like the Decepticons, the writers knew exactly how the Decepticons were supposed to behave, how the Decepticons were supposed to react, how they were supposed to do certain things. The Autobots, on the other hand, especially Optimus Prime's Autobots, I don't get that feeling. Uh, Bumblebee, a little bit. Not so much a lot of the others. A lot of the others are just like, and especially Optimus Prime. Like, I think that they just, they, they, they don't quite understand the character of Optimus Prime. But then again, this is where Optimus Prime is supposed to go. He's supposed to get there uh, to become the hero that we know. And Megatron descends. I had said, I have been making this comparison for a little while that... Uh, Megatron had, in, in, in Siege was kind of like the beginnings of Lenin and going into Stalin. And whereas I would feel like that, I feel like that Megatron literally descended hard into Stalin. And Shockwave is kind of funny mustache man. Uh, can't say his name, right? That's literally how I feel how these characters have descended and in a good way. They were written well. They 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 behave like evil Decepticons. Like they've really gotten to that point. Whereas the Autobots, it's like I don't. I, I, I there are some characters I've really grasped to. I really love Alita One. I love her character in the show. I think she's written really well, and I think that her team of Autobots was written pretty well, pretty good too. But it's Optimus Prime's team that I'm like. I know these characters so well, and I'm expecting that, and I'm not like I, I'm. I'm like, well, why is this character behaving this way, or why is Optimus Prime acting this way? Like, it, I, I understand where they're going with it, but it's 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 that balancing act, you know. And I need to rewatch it again because I want to I want to really dive into the spoilers, especially some of the the story elements that just went like either fell flat for me or just you know, were so exciting that I'm like, I can't wait to see Kingdom. I had those moments. I literally had those moments where I was like, this show's not that great to this show's awesome. It literally had those moments in the show that I was watching it back and forth. As Siege was, eh, it was all right. Earthrise is a lot better. Like I would say, I would venture to say like, here's, here's Siege and then Earthrise is a step above. You know, and in a lot of ways, that's a good thing because it takes it takes the the characters that they establish and brings them to to new and exciting places. The problem that I ha that people are saying is the title Earthrise. Earthrise is the title that Hasbro gave to the toy line. The idea behind the toy line was that this is the moment that the arc. Wait, you know, that the Ark activates the Autobots and Decepticons wake up on planet Earth in present day. That's the, the, the present, the idea of the toy line. The thing is, is that with Siege, they were telling a story from the, the last days of the war. And now it's that journey to Earth, you know, and that is the entirety of, of Earthrise. Because um, we understand that because we know that Kingdom is coming. So it's not really a spoiler for me to tell you that that's happening. But... The title of, of Earth Rise does make a lot of sense because it's it's in 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 a, in a sense that that they're getting to Earth. I would have retitled this Transformers War for Cybertron trilogy Galactic Odyssey. That would be a better title for the show, and it would have given us a better understanding about why this show is what it is. Is it good? Yes. Do I recommend watching it? Yes. Does it have its problems? Yes. I don't like Optimus Prime's dialogue. I don't like Soundwave's, the, the voice effect that they gave him. And I don't like the fact that Soundwave was lacking a little bit in the show. Uh, he's there. He's there. He's, Soundwave is there. But he's, he's like, his, his voice is, uh, I don't like the Cylon effect. I wish it was more sounded a little bit more generation one so it, there's there's some of the sound mixing there um and some of the dialogue it, the dialogue is a little off the pacing's a little off but overall the story was exciting the action a lot better a, a lot of great action pieces where it's just like 
you know, uh, the Autobots and Decepticons are fighting or the, the Autobots are fighting uh, something. And it's just really cool to see on screen. But again, there's some of the pacing issues that I felt where um, I wish, I, I almost think that they could have told the story that happens in Earthrise in maybe four episodes instead of six. And some of that backstory could have been in Siege and then they could have maybe even expanded Earthrise a little bit. Like that's, it's kind of like some of the stuff that I feel like how the show went. They saved a lot of the good stuff towards the end, but overall I, I do recommend watching Earthrise. I do. If you didn't like Siege, you may or may not be more as forgiving with Earthrise. So I understand the, the, the mindset of like, I hated Siege, so I'm not going to go watch Earthrise. Like, all right. Or I don't like the, the direction that this character goes. And so for that, I'm not going to watch it. Totally understand it. But I do recommend watching Earthrise, especially if you, first of all, if you like the foundation, that if you understand that Siege was the foundation, Earthrise is the story that, that you kind of wanted in a way. Um, but it's it's it, it could have been a lot better and it's under, I, I understand its limitations. So with that, again, the show was good. Definitely recommend watching it. It's not the worst Transformers cartoon ever, and it's not the best Transformers cartoon ever. So um, with that said, I want to know what you guys think. Have you seen C have you seen Earthrise? I keep on wanting to say Siege. Of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe. Check out my other videos as well. I have another Transformers discussion video coming very, very soon. In fact, if you are one of my patrons or my channel members, I have told them exactly who uh, I am involving with this video. And it's going to be a lot of fun to make this video. So I am excited, really excited to, to get the next one out for you. I'm hoping that, you know, maybe if I work as hard as I can to get it out before New Year's. But I'm, I don't know if if, uh, if time will allow for that. But, you know, so stay tuned for that. Um, but as always, guys, until next time, till all are one.